Okay, um, the reason I thought this would be a really useful site to start at is because we've chosen uh, Microlina, um, one of the species, uh, or one of the forms that have been selected at the University of New England uh, some decades ago and, and, um, and sold by Ian. Um, and so it's got, it's got a bit of proven history to it. So uh, that, that gives us certainty of it working in the right situation that it's selected for. In this case, trees, trajectory of the sun, probably half the day there is dappled light through here. That's perfect for weeping rice grass. So on your properties, that will mean if you've got southern or eastern slopes, or in the afternoon you've got an area protected from really searing sun, you can grow weeping rice grass on that site. It's a terrific grass. It, it does, does have a, a high nutrient um, harvesting load to it, so it turns it into a good grass for grazing for, 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 for all grazing animals. So it's also got red grass in it. So it's, it's this mix that some of you saw before. So the little, the little blue bits in here are the pelletised red, oh sorry, the pelletised red grass and, and the other are the, just the, the straight um, florets of um, we weeping rice grass. There you go. Yeah, don't nick it all. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a roadside fuel reduction initiative site. So it's something that um, was set up back in um, 2012 in conjunction with the Adelaide Hills Council so that we can get um, green, lower fuel load grasses instead of the phalaris up this high, a terrible fire risk. So something like, some of this was measured at Woodside and measured at five tonnes per hectare. On this site, it will be much less than that, probably about two tonnes per hectare against the phalaris and, and, and the other nasties of about 16 upwards. So way, way into the, the serious fire level zone. So we, we made a, a little list of preferred warm season grasses because we wanted this to be green all through summer and some cool season grasses. As it was because of weather conditions, there wasn't enough moisture for long enough to germinate the red grass, except at a little trial spot that we'll walk to in a little while. Uh, and some other factors meant that that didn't survive very well at all. The weeping rice grass did, and has done beautifully down, well, two thirds of the site. It's just terrific to walk over and marvelous to photograph. <laughs> and, and this section down here, you can almost draw a line back down there somewhere and say there's something wrong here. And there clearly is, there's something wrong with the, the soil in this area. Um, because we didn't have the money to do the tests and we weren't quite sure what, what that would tell us anyway, knowing how resilient native grasses are, I decided that we'd just go, go with this result. And of course, they're setting seed, so there's seed going into this environment anyway. Uh, and so some of that's going to germinate, and will have germinated um, from the original lot. And all we have to do is to make sure that these broadleaf weeds that keep popping up in this more open area um, uh, don't, don't get to set seed. So that we gradually wear that, that um, exotic broadleaf weed load down. So as you can see, they've been sprayed most of them are feeling pretty sick. This was, uh, we used dicamba, which is a broadleaf um, uh, selective herbicide. Doesn't hurt the grass. Um, okay, so, so you can just ap appreciate this as we walk through it and, and I'll take Miriam to a, a second startup spot. Before we go, before we go Bob, what what you've got here is really underwhelming. This, this, this area here is, you, you look at it and you think, 
these weeping grass plants are really struggling. You know, this, this, this is not, this is not what the, the, the I've got a, I'm, I'm oh, mic up. Oh, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you don't have to, don't have to compensate. So, so the, so all you need to do is just get your eye, you know, what's the advantage of this is the plants have really separated out. So it's pretty easy to pick them. So you're, you're, you're looking for the, the deeper green, not the yellow green. So you're looking for the deeper green, relatively small plant. And there, there are plenty of them around here, but they're, they're relatively small. As you get further down the site, you'll see much bigger plants. That's much more impressive down there. There, there clearly is something odd with the soil here. You know, so, it, you know, there's a history. We don't know what the history is, but it might have, there might have been something, you know, that the, the, you know, because the railway is just there. So there could have been ash burden or something that's come off there. We don't know what it is, but this, because I've been aware of this site here for quite a while, it's always struggled. So, it, you know, this, this, this is, this is, I guess, the poor end of the site, but the whole, the, and then the point is, you know, you can see the plants really quite clearly here. They're, they're still living, but they're, but they're not going that well. As you get along there further, better shade as well as better soil, and you and it's uh, the weeping rice grass does beautifully in those conditions there. And so by the time you leave this site, you'll be feeling really good. So Ian suggested that we're not feeling too good at present, but when we leave the site, you'll be saying, "Wow!" You can come forward a little bit. I actually want you sort of standing in it because this is one of the the most representative spots and we can also see some of the um, uh, some of the weed that's here. That's uh, a plant called vetch. It's a, a, a legume. In the old days it used to, or probably still is, they plant it with oats to put a bit of body into your oat, into your oat and hay. Yeah, we're happy to have you come around a little bit further. So just sort of a circle around here because we're actually looking at our feet in a sense. That's good. That'll be good. Okay, in your folder you'll see a series of shots of this site and you'll also have a page in there that looks at the, the sowing of all the roadside fuel reduction sites including this one. I don't want to go into, into a lot of detail about that, um, just to say that it follows a formula. And that formula can be, can be seen by just going onto the Torrens Landcare website or the Adelaide Hills Council website and looking at end of calendar year report um, um, sorry? Yes, I said Torrens Lancare. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then that gives you a full rundown on how all this happened. For our purposes today, this is, this is the final thing, but, but when you, you look at the dates, you're looking at the 16th of August last year. So this was bare ground, on the 16th of August, and then it was harrowed with a little diamond harrows that uh, you saw in my presentation uh, back in June, um, and and then and then we cast, and then we came back with the quad bike with a, a roller on the back of it, and just ran the roller over it to get good uh, soil seed contact. Within 28 days, your notes will tell you that, within 28 days, so um, we've, we've, in fact, we've in fact got germination. And then emergence, and, and then because of a reasonable amount of water, uh, a fairly rapid uptake of, of, um, of nutrient to kick the plants along. You'll notice now, as you've walked through, you'll see some... <laughs> you'll see some yellowing off. That's because I've been through here with glyphosate, with a, with a protected um, cone over it, so it doesn't affect the grass around it too much, and just drop the cone straight on top and go... 
like so. I've missed a few. Uh, so you do another run through and get them all. Most of them are ryegrass. You know, you're nasty, your worst enemy. <laughs> um, and so let's just say you had something looking like this, you would still be wanting to get rid of the ryegrass from it if your horses were going to go into it because you want to get your newly established native grassland as clean as possible, as native as possible. Hopefully with a big mix of things, but there's no reason why, why we all shouldn't start with a monoculture, just to, just to get a feel for how to do it. Can I add, Bob, Bob the, the, uh, what, the variety you're looking here is, is, is griffin weeping grass. This, that's this one here. And it's, it's a type that's selected specifically for lawns. You know, so it, it's been selected for being relatively short, relatively low biomass, fine leaves. Now that's not the description of a plant that you want in, in a pasture. So, so you know, the, there are other varieties that have been selected for bi bigger biomass than this. So you'd be choosing a variety other than this for, for pasture. So you know, th th this, is, this is great for cover. It's perfect for this circumstance where you want, where you want uh, relatively low volume, you don't want to have a fire issue, but it, it's, it's, not, it's not ideal in terms of fodder. You know, it's just a good demonstration of how the grass looks and what it, you know, how it will grow. The next variety would be probably, probably you know, double, a, double that sort of size, if you like. So you get bigger, bigger volumes with that. Love, love, this, this is a plant that loves acid soils. So have anyone got acid soils? That, that, that Most of us forget about liming. Just, just put this out. You don't have to put lime on. So one of the nicest compensations, you know, the, the seed will cost you more, but you don't have the cost of liming. You don't have the cost of fertilizer. And this had no fertilizer on here, Bob. No. No. So you know, it's it's pretty green and active. Uh, you know, the photographs that you, that you see of that uh, on, on file, well, will be up here. And you know, I could I could say off the record, but what the heck. I could say that that's really not good through all the 70s, 80s and, and 90s to drive into this town and have Phalaris this high and Coxfoot on the roadside, but council is stretched in, in maintaining um, asset protection. Yes, well we, yes, we used to, we, in fact we used to do roadside work and then the regulations changed. Risk management became a feature of, of, of what happened on, a, on the edge of a road and so as a result um, it was uh, people were discouraged from getting out somewhere near the side of the road. I believe there is a regulation that you can't use machinery within 2.5 metres of the black stuff. So that's okay, that means you can do all of this area with, with, without anybody worrying about you, but they will. So something will happen, something will change, and this is a digression I know, something will change because we, we can't have tall vegetation near a town or near a house, you just can't do it. It's just the, the fuel load is far too high and dangerous for, for it. But, uh, yeah, this is here for a long time, and as Ian pointed out, who knows down the track it may need may need some um, soluble nitrogen sprayed on it, especially if you're in a grazing situation. Ian might chip in, but that's perhaps you know because you're stripping nutrient from the soil every time you harvest or the animal eats. So at some stage, all grazed areas run down a bit um, because they're not being nomadically grazed unless you've got a really good large property with good rotation through lots of small paddocks and most of us don't have those size properties. Um, that's the ideal. So it is. Yeah, what, another factor here that you, you, everyone will see that there's actually seed heads on this. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, they're the old remnant seed heads. This would have been last summer. And the, what, 
what we always find with this species is that it recruits really well. You actually get a lot of new seedlings. And, and I was just looking at a little gap here, just, just a, a gap there's a couple of nice fresh seedlings in that. So this is a great species for actually filling itself in. One, one of the really good things about it. You know, other species aren't as good at it. This one is, a, is red hot at re, you know, recruiting next seedlings. So it, that's, you know, that's, a, that's a game. So when, when, when you're sowing, if you, you know, out, my suggestion always is to just let it run through the first year, let it set seed, let the seed fall to the ground, then you can start putting your stock in. If you put, it in, put them in beforehand and try to knock the seed heads off, well, you just make your life a little slow, a lot harder. So let it, let, it, let it grow, produce seeds. You know, there's a lot of seed heads there. And then, then you've got them for next year. And, and then exactly the same thing happens as is happening on your properties now. The, the seed's there in the ground for a time. And when the space opens up, when the conditions are right, the seeds will germinate. They've got a fairly long life in, in the soil, in that, in that little bit of topsoil. Um, so that, that's why, as Andrew pointed out before, soil prep's important in getting things established. If there was still a lot of phalaris seed through here, or oat seed through here, or ryegrass seed through here, clearly ryegrass has been more persistent than the other two, because there's only a little bit of phalaris and coxfoot that's come back. It's mostly ryegrass. Um, and the annual one's harder to get rid of because, because it's, it's in individual little plants and the, the perennial isn't so hard to get rid of as you can see because it's a definite tussock that you can spray. And actually, and, and Ian um, will probably confirm this, provided you're not putting, you're not overdosing with the, the knockdown herbicide, some drift from it onto the microlina isn't going to kill the microlina. Uh, uh, so it's something worth knowing. You don't have to panic. It might brown off a little, but it won't die. So how Any questions? I'm just wondering how often you come through and check and do your spraying, your spot spraying. Um, the response is always seasonal. So, so uh, Fire Prevention Officer Fred and Kim and I uh, we'll do regular checks of these areas seasonally. So after we've had January rains, that's terrific for all natives. It's great for weedy annuals. You know that, and because you know that, a few weeks after the rain, you come out and have a check, and then you can even use a lower dose of herbicide to take out little, little seedlings. Because you think, well, I've got plenty of what I wanted here. Now I'll get rid of these broadleaf weeds with, uh, with a broadleaf herbicide when they're really small and I won't have to use so much chemical. So, yeah, it's a, it's a response, seasonal response. You know, uh, you know after the opening rains that you're going to have a whole lot of stuff come up, so you have to be ready for that. Yeah, startup stuff. Are you dealing with the same sort of pests as a, a, a typical pasture? Stuff? Are you looking at red-legged earth mite and snails? Are they a problem with the uh, native seed germinating? Um, I'm not aware of that. Uh, if that if that occurs, I, I'm certainly not aware of it. I can't remember reading anything in the literature about that. Talking about snails? Hey. Snails? Yeah, like snails and red-legged earth mite, like how they attack new emerging pasture plants and stuff. I'm looking at Caroline here because yesterday, yesterday afternoon, I went out to see it at uh, Will Hannaford's new site at Charleston. And we actually, Will, if you recall, Will spoke for a couple of minutes last, last time we got together. Out of the Charleston site, he's established a whole lot of uh, different test plots of different species, both native and introduced uh, grasses. And uh, there's a very substantial insect problem there. So some, you've got these massive areas where there's beautiful rows of, of both native or introduced grasses and then they just stop. And then they resume you know, 10, minutes, 10 metres later. There's a section in the middle that's just really being ravaged by insects. And that's, that's now expanding out. So it, it, he's, got a, he's got an insect issue there. Uh, probably black-headed cockchafer. But 
I, I have actually lost a wallaby grass stand to uh, to fungus nap. It's another little flying insect. I've lost a, I almost lost one to red-legged earth mite. So you do have to be conscious of insects. And you can treat the same with mites. Yes, just just normal treatments. But yeah, you know, that that would be the same whether I was saying phalaris, ryegrass, or whatever else. You've just got to be conscious that if if you're seeing seedlings and all of a sudden you come back two days later and some of them are looking a bit sad, think insects. You know, you've got to be one of those questions.